a very good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Cadet First Class Club here at West Point for yet another edition, the final one of 2022, this week in Army football, as we're in the midst of the biggest week of the year, the biggest game of the year, coming up on Saturday for the 123rd time, Army and Navy at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. So much going on around West Point this week, the bonfire team send-off coming up a little bit later on up at the plane we're here with you until eight o'clock talking army football against navy and to get right to it how about this week this week at army football welcome to the star of our show right off the practice field army head coach jeff munkin getting set for his hey this is the ninth army navy game you'll be on the black knight sidelines for it is wow it, it, it's hard to believe rich very hard to believe what what's going through your mind right now you're what 68 hours from from kickoff just one thing trying to find a way to beat them that's it i've been thinking about that for weeks so uh the last two weeks it has been completely a, a, a laser focus on trying to get ready to beat navy and and i hope we'll play well enough to do that our our, our guys have been doing the same and so it's an it's an intense it's an intense preparation i assure you we haven't been with the fans here at the cadet first class club and those on facebook live youtube live in a few weeks your team a couple of weeks ago in action over thanksgiving weekend to win over umass on the road a convincing victory and jeff how did that feel two wins in a row you come into this game with you went on the road on thanksgiving weekend came away with a big win it was nice to get a win uh just to, to put everything together I, I feel like the last two two times we played we really played a complete game offense defense and special teams so uh, that was that was great and and uh, proud of our guys for you know on the Thanksgiving weekend going on the road getting a victory uh, and a and a resounding victory and then the way they transitioned to get ready for this game they just as soon as that game ended our entire focus went straight on to this game for Navy and and, uh, and our guys have handled it really well. How quickly does it transition, right? You're up in Amherst, it's a bus trip, so you, you know, win the game, what is that, 3, 3.30, what's the, that next practice, what's the communication leading in knowing there's that one game left against the midshipmen? Well, we sing the song in the locker room after the game and as soon as that song was over, we addressed the the job at hand and, uh, and, and really I think that's when it got started, so and it's like that every single time when that last game is over it is over and it's behind you immediately and uh and you got to move on because there's there's just there is so much to prepare for in this game so that we can play really clean and, and with with great fundamentals and our assignments because there's a lot of emotion in the game when there's a lot of emotion uh there, there tends to be mistakes made because of that emotion so we try to do our best to prepare our guys and, and do the things that we do and do them over and over and over again so that when we get in that moment and, and the emotions are running high, we're still able to, to execute our assignments and fundamentals. You got to play multiple quarterbacks against UMass. Tyre Tyler, your fine senior, three touchdowns in less than a half. You had a convincing lead. Was that by design to rest him and be able to get some other quarterbacks in the game, do some different things? Oh, we wanted to get as many guys in the game as we could at that point just to give them a chance to, to get some experience and to get all of the starters some needed rest. And uh, you know, two weeks sounds like a long time. It's, it's not a long time when you're practicing every day and, and preparing, you, know, you need some time to recover. And that was, that was an opportunity for those guys to do that. I was, I was, I was glad we were ahead enough that we were able to, to get some guys in there. Uh, Jeff, of course, the opponent this week, Navy, a program you know very well for a long time. Midshipmen come in with four victories on the season. They've played well as of late xavier r line and just the irony xavier r line came started what was it the he came in the second play of last year's oh ty lavatai after one play in last year's army navy mm -hmm. game and now this year it's lavatai going out a month ago xavier r line has started the last several games and leading navy heading into this one yeah i think they're playing the best they played all year right now and uh, you know, that's that's good for them and bad for us. So we're gonna have to play really good too and play our best football here at the end to 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 match those guys. So uh, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job leading his team. He's a good athlete. Runs really well and. Uh, 
It's, it's, it's a lot to defend. They got a lot of offense, a lot of different things they do. I'm sure a lot of Army fans, Jeff, thinking about last year, and, and we've talked about it, and it's not something you really like to look back to, but it's something that's been on your mind and this team's mind. Not that you need motivation in a game like this, and you talk about hunger. How much does the result from one year ago drive you and your team? I think in this game, because it is such a, a big rivalry, certainly when you're on the, long, uh, the, the wrong end of, uh, of the game, like we were uh, you know, almost 365 days ago, that uh, it, it burns, it stings, and it, and it stays with you. And I think the losses stay with you a lot longer than the victories do. So uh, hopefully that's a motivating factor for us. But win or lose, uh, there, there's great motivation to win this game. And hopefully our guys have that. It's Army and Navy, the 123rd meeting between the Black Knights and Midshipmen coming up on Saturday. Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Airtime just after a kickoff, just after 3 o'clock. Airtime across the Army Sports Network at 1 with the Army Football Tailgate Show. Time now to bring in the third member of our broadcast crew, and it's Caitlin Morris tonight. Caitlin, welcome. All right, hey. Caitlin. So for good reason, where Corey's not here tonight. So not only is it Beat Navy Week, our girl Corey is getting married on Friday. Well, she so planned that really well, Corey. didn't she? <laughs> What, w what was she thinking? I don't know, actually. And we'll talk to her next week about it, or whenever she gets back, if she gets back from the honeymoon. I'm going to tell you. The, but priorities, I but mean. How about this, though? She leaves, maybe she leaves her honeymoon on Saturday. She's checking her phone, and she sees Army, Navy, and an Army victory. How well, awesome would that be? Let's hope Corey, so. Right? Let's hope how so. How great would that yep. be, right? They're planning on watching on Saturday. That's so the plan. They're, they're cheering for you. Okay, yep. as a newlywed, you know, Corey, best of luck. Congratulations, and, and make sure you watch. Listen, listen as well on Saturday to the ball game. So, uh, Caitlin, we got to finish strong tonight. Final show of the season. Got to get a lot of questions. A lot of people want to know info from Coach. Yes. So everyone here tonight, if you have any questions, please come find me. And to everyone watching at, at home on Facebook, please drop some questions in the comments. Comment section of Facebook Live, YouTube Live. You could watch our last show. You can listen across the Army Sports Network, the Varsity Network app. And coming up next, our special guest, and Jeff, someone I've been trying to get on this show for years, multiple years, the chief of stuff. Yes, Clayton Kendrick Holmes. We're, we're taking this show way down, I'm just telling you, oh. getting this guy on the show. I'm, I, we, we, we're, it, I, I'm, I'm digging on Clayton here. He does a terrific, terrific job. I've known Clayton a long time. Uh, he's our chief of staff, and uh, as he calls himself, the chief of stuff, because he does all the stuff. And, and I want to uh, get into that. Incredibly organized, former head coach. Uh, just, just, I mean, I lean on him uh, for a lot, I'm, and uh, I'm glad he's on our staff. And a lot of things we talk about on this show, Clayton has direct involvement with. Mm. So we're going to get some answers to some questions yep. that we have. Yep. Post-game food. We'll, we'll get into all of it coming up in just a moment this week at Army Football live from the Cadet First Class Club back in just a moment right here on the Army Sports Network from Learfield. Today, I'm a captain on the Army West Point football team. Tomorrow, I strive to lead winning teams. Today, I study to excel in the classroom. Tomorrow, I can reach for the stars. Today, I am leading cadets during summer training. Tomorrow, I will be ready to lead soldiers on the battlefield. Today, I lead with character as the brigade commander. Tomorrow, my possibilities are endless. West Point, where leaders are made. And now the big one. There's no other time like it at the point. When Army and Navy squared off in the annual classic. And we are live at the Army-Navy game. I remember going on my first helicopter assault in combat. Man. That was tough, but it, I wasn't nearly as, as anxious as I was waiting for the kickoff of the Army Navy game. Army's terrific goal line stand thinks to Navy. It was another brilliant coaching effort by Earl Blake and his staff. The only stitch one is carried off the field. The prognosticators were wrong. It's an Army day. For the cadets, it's a tremendous performance. This is the foundation.
A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear? It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community. That's our mission. Always. Welcome back to the Cadet First Class Club. This week in Army football, Broadway's back at Eisenhower Hall Theater, the Hudson Valley's premier performing arts center. Tickets go on sale soon for updated season info and ticket sales. Visit iCall.com. That is iCall.com. Welcome back to the show this week in Army football. Rich DeMarco alongside head coach Jeff Monk. And as we get set for Army and Navy, time now for our special guest. And Jeff, someone, I'll, I'll let you do the intro. So, Clayton Kendrick Holmes, our chief of staff, chief of stuff. Um, Welcome, Clayton, to this week in Army yes, football. Yes, and, 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 and I really did get a dig on him before the break, but, but uh, it was all in fun. Clayton does a great job for us. He is, um, everything that goes through that office goes through Clayton's office. And uh, he's a former head coach, thinks like a head coach, and, and I can't tell you how many times he comes to me with things that, I need to be thinking about he's already out in front of it scheduling um, movements with the team going from one place to another on campus or off campus uh, just just does a, a terrific job helps us with staffing um, finding new people for hires uh, he just does it all and we're, we're really fortunate to have Clayton on our staff Clayton welcome thank you it's great to be here so a great intro by coach Munkin how would you describe your job when people ask what you do uh, whew, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's it's a lot of stuff. I mean, that's what I say. I'm stuff. But uh, I mean, how lucky am I to be sitting here with you between the voice of Army and the head ball coach? This is awesome to be here tonight. And uh, Rich, you've asked me a couple of times. I've always begged out. But I, I really feel privileged to be here and to be a part of the Army football program. It's amazing to be here. Um, and I, I mean, I, I think my experience as a head coach is doing a lot of the operational kind of stuff. and. And uh, as in the Division Three level, which I was at, you kind of have to do everything from equipment to the strength program to the hiring and scheduling and all that kind of thing. So it's it's very similar to what I do now. It's just you know I'm not doing the football and as much of the recruiting part of it. But um, I uh, I've got any, anywhere from the HR stuff to the facilities, um, you know, to you know helping out all of our. We've got a great staff. I mean, there's about you know 35 folks who are not coaches that are just helping support everything. So, um, you know, my primary job is to keep coach focused on uh, driving culture and acquiring talent. And if there's anything I can take off his plate so he can focus on that, that's what I try to do. So, try to elevate Army football however I can. And he does. It, you know, when I was the when I was the head coach at Georgia Southern before I came here, I didn't I didn't have a director of football operations. I didn't have a a recruiting staff. 
uh, we, we didn't have anybody to help. So I had to do all that stuff. I had to do all the scheduling and, and check on all the travel and uh, housing for our team and, and meals in the cafeteria. And, and I had to check to make sure all that was, was, was where it needed to be. And uh, so grateful to have somebody who's, who's done that. As, as Clayton said, at the Division three level, at the lower levels, you got to do all that yeah. stuff yourself as a head coach. So he takes that off of me and really does allow me, as he said, to, to procure talent for our program, whether it's players or staff, coaches, and drive the culture of our program. So Clayton, uh, Clayton's invaluable. And Clayton, a championship coach, several years at SUNY Maritime. What was the one thing, you mentioned all the things you had to do at that level. What's the one thing you really didn't like to do? The most. <laughs> I don't and, know. It, and then I mean, who does I, it now I, for I'm Army? Sure That's all what the I process. I mean, uh, I'm so thankful to have Aiden Offer. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, one thing that coach said is like, hey, let's, uh, I, I want you to do more chief of staff stuff and less operations. And so we were able to get Aiden in there. And I mean, Aiden is just a jack of all trades and, and a real wizard in there. So he does uh, a lot of our, um, you know, just the operation stuff where it's seating charts and, you know, it's, it's that kind of stuff that I had, had done for a lot of years. And it just, you know, it's, uh, it's good. I mean, you know what coach wants, you know, as far as how you want the seating on the plane or on the bus or how you want the hotel rooming set up and all that. And, you know, so passing along that to Aiden and, and he's doing a great job. And we've got Brittany, um, Brittany Morass has, has been doing a great job as well, like doing advance. So they go down to the hotel and get all set up. So when we show up, everything's all lined up and ready to go. So, and uh, she's down there right now in Philly and uh, uh, Jimmy Noel is down there doing advance right now. So when we show up tomorrow, we'll be ready to rock and roll. And just to let our listeners and viewers in to some of the detail and how detailed and organized everything is. So uh, very fortunate enough that when there's a road game, get to travel with the team on the team plane. On, on Thursday, everyone on the plane gets a personalized text message, and it's a photo, and it's your seat number, right? This is going to be your seat number tomorrow on the plane. When you land, you're told exactly where the rental cars are going to be. You're given exact directions. There's a sign in the window of your car, you know, Army Radio. So uh, it's, it's, it takes a lot of labor and a lot of detail. That, that really is the thing that really strikes me, because a lot of people could work hard, but it's the attention to detail, I think, that you talk about elevation, right? right. We talk a lot mm -hmm. about that. That's what elevates hard work. Yeah, and there's no detail too small in a championship organization, which is what Coach um, says. So that's what we try to do is just take care of all those little details. So, um, you know, creating that culture. And so everybody's expecting it's got to be first class. And uh, that's what we expect on and off the field. Okay, so. now to the hard-hitting questions. Okay. okay. And, I, and, you know, Clayton, if, if you'd like to answer, you know, maybe Jeff, you could chime in. So we get a lot of questions on this show about the post-game meal, mm. okay, barbecue. And critical. Where, you know, <laughs> a lot of times coach will, will give you all the credit, sometimes the blame, on the quality of that post-game meal, pre-game meal. Planning that goes into that. No, I don't no, know. No, no, but if it's going to be barbecue or not, you know, hey, that's, that's going to be up it's to barbecue clay. or barbecue. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of a... So how does that? Well, I mean. That. Seriously, people seriously want to know about the food. You know, I, here's what I'll tell you. Coach Munkin's love language is food. I mean, that's how he shows that he cares. Yeah. That's right. That's back there. Of, she knows. Exactly. So, you know, he wants to make sure. And one of the funnest things, especially if you're going somewhere where a coach has been before. So, you know, when you go to Buffalo, he's going to tell you exactly where to go get wings. I'm down in Atlanta. He's telling me, you know, exactly where. He'll give me more places to go and eat great food than I have time to go and eat it. Or, he told uh, me a place in Amherst. Amherst. He told me a place by got to set up the white got a Rolodex of places to yeah, go. So, yeah. you know, we'll go and say, hey, Coach, you know, we usually like to have a snack when we arrive at the hotel. So um, we'll have a snack there at the hotel. And then a couple hours later, we've got our standard dinner and then, you know, a snack later that night. And there, there's a lot of eating. There. Yeah, there's a lot of food. Yeah. Post-game practice, full-size versus miniature candy bars. Well, it depends on if we win the week before. So we've been we've been rolling with some full size candy bars. It's the been last good. couple of weeks. A lot of people yeah, like good. a full size candy bar. After you bars. win, yeah. it's no, full no. size. You don't. It's the miniature size. Clayton, you you had several years as a head coach, and you, you talk about all the things you're involved in. What's the most rewarding part of of what you're able to do? Because you know, not only are you impacting, you know, as a staff, right? You're impacting all these cadet athletes, but there's so many people that are supporting the program many of them very young so you're you know you're guiding and you're mentoring people as well to me it just seems like just like a really 
rewarding experience. Might, yeah. might make you pull your hair out sometimes, but, but what's the most rewarding part for you? Well, I mean, it's, it's enabling the other leaders in our staff. I mean, you've got Connor Hughes in the strength, and you've got Jared and TK down there, and the, we've got Tommy Cancalosi down in the equipment room. We've got, um, you know, John Boyd, an Army Navy legend. Uh, John Boyd's 2017 jersey was in here tonight. Is, I think uh, Colonel Gretchen Nunez was it, wearing it. It's a fact. Sure she's still it was in here. Yep. So that's the jersey, right? There it is. That's the jersey. And, and I want to say this. That's the actual jersey. I still say it's maybe the biggest play in recent Army football history, the tackle. Big that's play. The jersey worn. Won the game. For that, won the game. Yep. Won the 2017 game. That jersey. Okay. You mentioned Boyd. Okay. Continue. Yeah. Well, I mean, just being able to help him do his job and, you know, if he runs in any obstacles, run an interference for him and helping him to be able to help all of our players. I, you know, it's a, I miss the head coaching part of being kind of directly involved with the players, but I think I have that impact, which I like by being able to help coach help the players or our other coaches help the players or, our, you know, our other staff just be able to elevate those guys. And, I mean, they're, they're warriors. I mean, that's something that uh, – Everybody around. I mean, this is a first class order. Everybody down in 639 with Mike Buddy, and you know, when you're dealing with compliance issues or you're dealing with tickets or marketing, I mean, you know, there's just great people to work with, and, and we're all just trying to make things better. And um, so that, that's one of the most rewarding things for me. And then just seeing our players be successful. And, you know, guys, I've been here, this is my fifth season, so I've been able to see guys go from being plebes, you know, all the way to selecting their branch and graduating. That, that, that part's really rewarding seeing them. And then, starting to see some guys start to come back so that's We're fun very very lucky to have you and work with it's you great to be here. Know you. so what's your what's your plan when are you heading down i know the team's gonna have but what's gonna be your what are the things you've got to watch out for and do the second you roll into philadelphia i'll well, just make sure every, nobody's standing in the lobby without a room you know we'll <laughs> make sure make sure everybody's got a snack nobody's hungry after sitting on the bus for two and a half hours and um yeah we'll once we get all settled in we'll make sure everything's set with the hotel and and uh, yeah, Brittany and, and you know, she'll have everything ready to roll when we get there. So, Jeff, one of the best. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Clayton, we, we really appreciate it. So don't be a stranger. I, I, I'm going to put the invite for next year coming on the show. I don't know. The audience might have gotten their fill of Clayton Kendrick. Yeah, I, I think so. There's not a lot more stuff to talk about. <laughs> but we so, can do uh, is we can, you know, we can kind of, um, you know, as the year goes on, mark things we could specifically ask you about. But Clayton, hey, we appreciate it. We'll see you down in Philly. And thank you for all you do, not only impacting the cadet yep. athletes, but also so many people and so many young people helping out on staff with the Army football team. It's great to be a part of it. Thanks so much. Army football chief of staff, Clayton Kendrick Holmes, joining us on this week in Army football. So some great uniforms, Jeff, for Saturday's game, right? Yes, you know, absolutely. Your the, thoughts on them? Uh, the uniforms every year are great, but just – what they represent to see that video to see those the iron soldiers and to know that we're uh we're, we're it, it's Patton's unit and uh, exactly. old iron side so really incredible to be wearing these uniforms so we're going to talk more about the uniform on the other side of the break for those watching on facebook live and on youtube live ryan panny's going to roll the videos we go into breaks so you'll take a look at really the history around the army football uniforms for this year's army navy game here on this week at army football back in just a moment right here on the army sports network from learfield today we continue our story it begins with a conference in washington where secret plans are made for a large-scale invasion of north africa In December 1941, just two weeks after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, President Franklin Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill met in Washington, D.C. to coordinate the entry of America's armed forces into the Second World War. The Arcadia Conference established the strategic framework for the next year of the war to include the decision to initiate planning for Operation Torch in North Africa. Under these same conditions, this team again displays the great fighting spirit and capabilities for which Old Ironsides has long been famous. On November 8, 1942, the Allies commenced Operation Torch with the largest amphibious assault in history up to that point in time. With landings near the cities of Casablanca, Oran, and Algiers, and forced the capitulation of French Vichy forces within days. 
After gaining these critical footholds, Allied forces quickly initiated operations into Tunisia. Soldiers of the 1st Armored Division would enter the crucible of combat over the next six months in numerous battles against Axis forces. The Iron Soldiers of the old Ironsides Division would employ crucial lessons learned to repulse the Axis operations at El Gatar, enabling Allied forces to drive Axis forces from North Africa. We have victory. A bright gleam has caught the helmets of our soldiers and warmed and cheered all our hearts. Ah, this is not the end. Uh, it is not even the beginning of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. While those words rang true for the Allied powers, for their enemies, it was the beginning of the end. This year marks the 80th anniversary of Operation Torch and the commencement of operations against Axis forces in the European theater. The lessons that the 1st Armored Division and the United States Army learned in North Africa would propel them for subsequent operations in Italy and Western Europe. On December 10th, we honor the Iron Soldiers of the 1st Armored Division and their storied legacy that have long made old Ironsides famous. Go Army! Beat Navy! This week in Army football brought to you by West Point Family and MWR. FMWR offers source sporting, golfing, skiing, catering, camping, and many more activities and programs. Visit westpoint.armymwr.com for more information. Back on this week in Army football, those watching on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, got to look at the Army football jerseys honoring the first armored division. And Jeff, a lot to be proud of and a family connection. Your brother-in-law. Yeah, Evan Mahan. He was he was in that unit and uh, very proud to be wearing those uniforms to represent him and all the Iron Soldiers. Love seeing Evan at several road games. Gotten to know him a little bit, right? And tremendous sense of humor. Your, your it, sister, your that sister he is. did well. He's a funny guy, but looks aren't everything. That's what Ooh. I tell him. So I tell you, he's that, not here to defend himself. He's so. not. He's not. He probably is watching because I sometimes will get a message. Sometimes a. Facebook message, so we'll see. But hey, one of the great guys in the first armor division. Your thoughts, though, the green, the, the mud splatter, the old iron sides on the helmets? They are so well thought out every year, and just the, the effort and detail that goes into those. Uh, our history team here, uh, Nike and their history team, and, and, and the, uh, the staff that they have that spends 18 months yeah. preparing these uniforms really special and uh, and really excited so uh, the uniforms don't win the game but uh, I, c I can assure you that there's there's a great sense of pride being out there in those uniforms and playing in this game for our players and and uh, and representing all of our men and women's, women that serve but particularly the the first armored division Jeff I was talking to some folks today and, and really I don't think anyone needs any more motivation in a game like this this is why you come to West Point to play football to play in the Army Navy game so I look at it really as just a tremendous sense of pride wearing that you're talking to Jacoby Buchanan saying, hey, you know, when we Mark well brought and when we put that uniform on, 
we, we take the pride of that unit. And I think that maybe is is something that really you can you know differentiate from motivation and still just get a tremendous feeling out of something like this. No question about it. And uh, it, it, I, I love the uniforms every year. I especially love them when we win. Same um, here. And it's uh, it's hard to it's hard to look at those uniforms, the games we lost, just because it it it, it, it yeah. wrenches your gut. But uh, you know that there is a sense of pride there. And uh, you know, think about last year, the, the, uh, representing the special forces and and uh, and not being able to come away with a victory. Just uh, I, you know, I want to represent them better than that. So hopefully we'll do that this year in the first armored division uniforms. Time now for questions. We've reached the midway point of the show. Questions for Army head coach Jeff Munkin on this week in Army football. It's Army and Navy. The Army Navy game presented by USAA coming up on Saturday. Kickoff just after three o'clock at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Airtime across the Army Sports Network at one with the Army football tailgate show. Caitlin doing a great job gathering some questions and here we go final show of the year first question of the night so we've got our first question from jerry coach who's the starting quarterback gonna be well tiger tyler's been our starting quarterback he's done a great job of leading our team and and uh he's gonna be a a, a big part of our game on saturday so uh you expect to see tiger tyler and 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 perhaps some of the other guys but but he's he's uh he's right now our guy health of that quarterback position i know Cade ballard had been banged up and uh, of course jamel jones had gotten some action we've even seen bryson daly in the past couple of games how do you feel about that room right now uh, they're, they're healthy at this point and uh you know just the, the taking those tackles and taking a beating over the course of the year it, it beats them up a little bit but uh, having having these two weeks to get ready has helped those guys recover. So feel pretty good about their health. Next question for Coach Munkin. So we got our next question from Bianca. Bianca, you asked is a the, question before. Is the team excited? Bianca, the team is excited. They are very excited. There is there is not a game that that they get more excited about than this one. And uh, so it's going to be a great game, a great Saturday, and hopefully an Army win. Jeff, you've said on senior days. You know, it's really not their last game, right? So it, it's a little different. Your family comes, you have a great weekend, this, that, and the other. Is there something special you'll do as a program before the Army Navy game? Because this will be the final game for these firsties. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of time in the meeting room, in the <laughs> classrooms, and watching film and trying to prepare ourselves to win. That's that's the most important thing we can do uh, for these guys in their final game. So uh, hopefully, we will do a great job over the next couple of days of preparing ourselves and and be as ready as we can be when we kick it off on saturday sounds good next question for coach munkin your next question is from anthony hey coach uh, what's going to be the x factor in keeping the mids bottled up this year well they uh they got a good offense and a good quarterback and that's a, that's a good question um we, we've got to be very sound in our in our in our calls and and our execution of those calls on defense um it's a lot to defend and one of the things about the triple option that makes it so so agonizing uh, when you're standing out on the opposite side of the ball from it is all the things that they can do the play action passes the counter plays uh, reading different defenders uh, but I think Nate Woody does an incredible job he's a really good football coach and I, I you know our guys work really really hard so hopefully we'll have a great performance and and be able to shut them down getting off of blocks and uh, and getting to the ball carrier and getting the ball carrier tackled is the key to winning so if we get ourselves positioned right and then do those things fundamentally we'll we'll have a good chance thank you thank you for the question jeff and thanks for visiting from hawaii all the way from hawaii how about that the yep. 50th state quinn moretzky his home state that's right Hallelujah. isaiah felici isaiah felici so you know each other so well army and navy how much is there a desire maybe a thought that you might feel you need to do something different because you know each other so well well i think in this game there's always been things that that both teams have done a little bit differently um and just because the magnitude of this game and 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 as you said that desire to be a little bit different but you can't get away completely from what you believe in and and what you think you do best and we've got to do what we think we do best and so that if we do that well enough then that should be good enough to win the game. Sounds good to me. Next question for Coach. Another one from the crowd tonight. We have a question from Melanie. 
Hi, Coach. I have a question for you. In the fourth quarter, I see everybody holding up their crossed arms with the four and the fist. Can you tell us what that means? So uh, we, we started this after my first year here, um, and we placed a real emphasis on winning the fourth quarter, scoring more points and, and winning the fourth quarter, positioning ourselves to, to win the game in the fourth quarter is part of it. But, but in the fourth quarter, uh, being, the, being the dominant team. And, uh, and so in the off season, through that, after that first year going into the second year, every day we created these opportunities to compete at the very end of a workout, the very end of practice, uh, and treat it like the fourth quarter. So we have a, a flag with a skull and crossbones on it that we've carried in this, in this program for several decades. And so uh, just kind of the skull, our, our head, and the crossbones. Uh, in, in football, this is the, the, the sign for four. Uh, and so everybody else, the fourth quarter, we're the fourth quarter warriors. And uh, we put up the skull and crossbones. And it just is to symbolize that there's a, there's a heightened intensity going into that fourth quarter. So it doesn't work all the time. We haven't won every fourth quarter, but since we started doing that, we, we've seen improvements and our guys really do take a lot of pride in playing, playing a really good in the fourth quarter. Thank, Thank you. For good question. question. Love that video you play at the end of the third quarter that gets you pumped up. The fourth quarter Warriors video, yes. right? At home games. So if you're, you know, if you're thinking of that, that hand gesture and motion, it kind of lines up with that video. Absolutely. That's right. How conscious are you of stuff like that? I know at Army Navy, right, you're going to see spirit videos during breaks. You're going to see this, that, and the other spectacle, like a, like a Super Bowl. As the head coach, how much are you aware of that? Uh, uh, not at all. At all. Um, and, and, and hopefully none of the rest of our guys are really conscious <laughs> of it either. They got, they got business at hand. But there's, there's just other things and other business we got to take care of at that point. Uh, whether it's a TV timeout or a break, and, and, and really we're focused on that. How about the spirit missions around Army Navy? Fantastic. How about the scuba team? That was awesome. I mean, that's... That's covert that's right there. I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know how they pulled it off. I, like, I've seen a lot of spirit videos. I've seen a lot of recounting of spirit missions. I don't know. That was awesome. I, I don't know how you can beat that. The, the ice cream team, the ice cream machine out the door, that topped it all for sure. Great to see the superintendent, Lieutenant General. Oh, yeah. Gillen. He's all in. Coin. He's a team player. All in. No doubt about that. And General Gillen's here tonight. So we appreciate him stopping by and supporting this week in Army football. Let's have one more question this segment for Coach. So we've got a question from Cadet Wilson. Hey, Coach, as a member of the Corps, you know, 12th man coming in on Saturday, what do you need from the Corps to make sure the Army beats the hell out of that question? As loud as you can bring it for 60 yeah. minutes, as loud as you can do it, yeah. and do not let the, 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 the other guys in the other uniforms on the other side of the, the stadium from you beat you out for cheering. We, we, we got to be on it, and we got to be loud. Every third down, every fourth down, you guys, you guys win it up in the stands, and you're going to help us win it in the, on the field. So I appreciate it. Let's, let's cheer loud. Be Navy. No, thank you, Cadet Wilson, for that question. I'll tell you, that, that's great to hear. What do you need from the Corps? Love it. Oh, it's going to be great. Army and Navy. Get loud. I'm hearing it. Yep, every day. On the bullhorn. Get loud. Get loud. Get loud on Saturday. We'll all be the march ons. Of course, the ceremonies before the game and, of course, kickoff going to be so much fun. Army and Navy at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. When we come back, another round of questions for Army head coach Jeff Munkin right here on the Army Sports Network from Learfield. The first Armored Division's performance at the beginning of World War II uh, was emblematic of the performance of the United States Army at this point in the war. Uh, this was the first major ground action against German forces in World War II. Operation Torch and the North Africa campaign was a crucible of learning from the small unit level to the highest level of, of command. And they suffered initial setbacks, especially at Castorine Pass, but demonstrated resiliency in the face of adversity. The identity of the 1st Armored Division is forged here. Much like the United States Army, the 1st Armored Division adapted to the difficult environment, seized the initiative, and began to find success, such as their defeat of German forces at El Guitar. Like any quality organization, the 1st Armored Division made adjustments as the war progressed. 
and apply the lessons that were learned in North Africa in follow-on campaigns in Italy until the conclusion of the war in Europe. The uniform showcases the iconic tanks of the 1st Armored Division in World War II. From the helmet down to the cleats, the Army football player takes on common attributes of the M3 tank that the 1st Armored Division used during Operation Torch and the North Africa campaign. The tricolor 1st Armored Division patch on the helmet signifies the combined arms nature of the division. The infantry blue, the armor yellow, and the artillery red, symbolizing the teamwork that is demonstrated by the Army football team. The dirt and mud splatter on the helmet and jersey represent what the tanks look like in the deserts of North Africa. The tanks aren't clean as they move across open deserts and harsh terrain. The color scheme of the jersey represents the color scheme of the M3 tank. The player from the waist up represents the turret of the tank. Unique to each player's jersey is the player's cadet regiment identified in the star on the right shoulder and their cadet company name on the right chest, uh, representing their peers on the field of friendly strife. This adds a personal nature to the uniform, much like the soldiers of 1st Armored Division did to their tanks in World War II and even today. European, African, Middle Eastern campaign ribbon on the back of the jersey that the division earned in North Africa and Italy. The old iron sides and iron soldiers riding on the helmet is an additional touch that connects the storied legacy of the 1st Armored Division with present day iron soldiers and the Army football team. First Class Club this week in Army football. would like to thank its restaurant and tavern partners, Brothers Barbecue and O'Toole's Pub. Check out the restaurant and tavern partners portion of GoArmyWestPoint.com for more information. Support those who support the course. So just for our viewers, listeners, this will be our last segment of questions. We're going to go about eight or nine minutes or so, then take our final break. I'll come back to wrap it up because we're going to get Coach off to a very, very important assignment coming up begins eight o'clock sharp and I was made it was made very clear to me in a meeting that I have some control over whether this fails or not got so it. we got to get you there by eight o'clock bonfire here we go bonfire yep. how much fun is that it's a lot of fun a lot of fun for all the cadets and for the team and and uh, a great tradition saw the pallets being piled up there today they'll they'll put that like boat topper I guess on top of it and Fireworks, hey, whatever. Burn it to the ground. Burn it to the ground. And just one of the great, just so many great traditions around Army Navy, not just on game day. From the Goats and Engineers on, game. Goat Engineers. I think the Engineers won tonight. Is okay. that is that correct? I, engineers I, or Goats? I, believe I the didn't engineers, get a report on it. I believe the Engineers won tonight. And you got the bonfire, team send off. And then, of course, the service academy exchange before the game those exchange cadets they do a good job yeah i think they do the ones at navy that are west point cadets and so a lot going well, on i'm sure all their i'm sure all their students would like to do an exchange here i mean if they were up to army standards they would have come to west point anyway so I'm, I'm sure they're glad to be able to be an exchange student here i love the pictures of the marchands those are great yes army's always very tight no detail too small so. that's right 
There you go. Okay, so our final segment of questions for the season here on this week, week in Army football. So, Caitlin, let's get to them. So, Steve Rothup said, Coach, do all the players dress for Army-Navy, including freshmen? No, they do not. We dress out about 100 guys, maybe maybe just a couple over 100, and the rest of the guys are able to be on the sideline with us, and they'll have all their Army-Navy gear on. That's very much like we, we do at home for our home games. That's a great question. And Jeff, any, being an independent, how how do you determine for our fans how many players dress for a row? You know, a lot of times conferences have rules of how many can dress. How does it work being an independent when you're playing particular opponents? Uh, we don't we don't have a limit, but we set a, a self-imposed limitation. Just it, it's it, logistically, it's sure. not possible to travel with the entire football team. So uh, we take 72 players on the road. It, that's manageable in terms of the airplane, the buses, the hotels. And, uh, and that's, we're not going to use more guys than that in a football game. So that's, that's the right number for us. And in these big games like this, uh, it's nice to have some guys that we can dress that, that maybe didn't travel a lot uh, or guys that are veteran players that, that, uh, that haven't had to travel to all the games. And we want to reward them with an opportunity to dress out in this game. Next question for Coach Munkin. Uh, Guy Swan wants to know, uh, Navy is notorious for trick plays on offense. How do you prepare for that aspect of Navy's game? We try to prepare for all the ones that they've run and then we make up a lot of trick plays and, and practice those. We, you know, we just don't know, but I think playing sound defense and having our guys positioned where they need to be on the field, uh, trick plays shouldn't trick us. We should be in position for those. So hopefully if they try some on Saturday, which I'm sure they will, uh, we'll be in position to, to, uh, to stop them. I'm like a broken record when people ask me about this game every year. I always say turnovers and special teams determine it. Special teams, it just seems like, Jeff, uh, in wins and losses, have played a huge part of your season this year. They have. Uh, special teams are, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of field position at, at hand there. Every kickoff play, every punt play, there's, there's a potential of about 40 yards of field position. So they are big plays, and when you can get a big return or get a stop uh, on a kickoff inside the 25, you can block a punt. Uh, you know, any any big play in special teams, I think, makes a difference in the football game. And then, as you said, turnovers is the the most prevalent statistic in terms of winning and losing games. If the team that wins the turnover battle is very likely to win the football game, so uh, that's something we focus on and and uh, and try to make important. Next question for coach. Uh, this question's from Tommy Hubbard. He said, Coach, how is the injury situation? Did the extra week help get some of the injured players ready for this weekend? Every time we have a week off uh, and an extra week, extra week to prepare, uh, it, it does get some guys healthy. Not everybody, but, uh, but a lot of those guys that, that got hurt in the last game and even in the, the couple of games before, uh, they're starting to return, and, and, uh, and, that, and I'm optimistic about a pretty good number of those guys being able to play on Saturday health wise and I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a handful of players that you know they're gonna need to take care of some things after the season and this is just the last game they're gonna fight for. right it is that's a fact uh, we've already got some procedures lined up sure but they'll play in the game on Saturday which you know just you got to appreciate the warrior spirit and the toughness of those guys no doubt about that we have time for still a few more questions here on this this final question segment of the season on this week in Army football so we have another question from Guy Swan. He said, tell us about Andre Carter and what he means to this team. Andre is such a good player, and uh, he's had a great career. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm disappointed for him that he had those injuries this year. He was out for a couple of games and uh, completely and, uh, and was limited in some games. So he doesn't have the stats that he had a year ago. He had got such notoriety uh, in last season, having all those sacks and tackles for loss. But he's meant a lot to our team. He's a very unselfish player. Uh, a, a great team guy and just plays within the defense and and I really appreciate him and so do his teammates Reese's senior bowl. I know Brett Toth had a tremendous performance there a few years ago It's gonna I'll tell you he's a great representative of Army football Andre Carter He is and uh, it really it's his personality and and uh, and his unselfishness his commitment to the brotherhood and that's that's Army football and so He's, he's played his whole career like that. Uh, he's, as, he's as highly accoladed a player as we've had here in decades. Uh, people have talked about him being a, a potential first round draft pick, which is unbelievable and, and I'm excited for him. Whether he will be or not, just to be in that conversation is pretty special. 
and you'd never know it. He studies harder, works harder in, in, the, in the classrooms and in the film rooms, uh, in his off time, down time, works harder than anybody on our team to be the best player he can be and be the most prepared he can be. So I just really appreciate him. One last question for head coach Jeff Munkin here on the show. Last question. Uh, coach, do you have a memory or a favorite memory from Army Navy games of past? Wow. Well, I get asked this every year, and there's so many great memories. Anytime that we've won the game, they, they, there's plenty of great memories. 2016? 2016, breaking the streak, um, winning it three, three years in a row. I mean, that was after losing it 14 years in a row to win three in a row was big. Uh, to win here at home. Uh, in the in the 2020 season back to back winning that one and turn around and and winning the commander chiefs trophy the next week in the win over air force a lot of great memories and uh and unfortunately some agonizing memories from those losses so uh we're we're uh we're gonna work our as hard as we can on saturday to make some great memories so but, uh, let's hope we got those at the end of the day the wins are like children hard to pick one over the other yeah, right that, they're all absolutely they're all special they're Jeff. all yep jeff we're gonna let you go Big things to do up at the bonfire, up on the plane. And thanks for a great season, and we'll talk to you on Saturday. Let's go get them. Beat Navy. That's Army head coach Jeff Munkin. When we come back, I'm just going to put a wrap on this season of this week in Army football. When we come back, Jeff is off to the bonfire. I'll be back in just a moment right here on the Army Sports Network from Learfield. The promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or seal with a pinky. USAA started with a promise to take care of the military community. And 100 years later, that's still our mission, always. Beat Navy, that's really the only thing that uh, goes to our mind. You know, we've been working for it all year and um, that's the main, that's the number one goal when it comes to this game. Uh, it's definitely exciting. Uh, Ever since last year, you know, we felt that we definitely should have won that game. Just a bad taste on our mouth. And, you know, just coming back and preparing this week and all throughout the season coming up to get this game, we are very excited. You know, just get the win. Um, we weren't able to do that last year. And that kind of, you know, that's what we worked for all year in this program was just to win that game. And so to not be able to accomplish that kind of like, kind of invalidates all the work you did. So we're just trying to um, right that wrong. and. Um, Execute the best job we can do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, that's definitely something that I think about things that I could have done better um, to make a huge impact in the game is definitely that run, um, just breaking that tackle and then hopefully scoring a touchdown on that one. Oh, this is the the most intense, the intense two weeks of of our lives for uh, for every year. Um, our guys prepare for this game. And, and practice is, is uh, just at a level of focus that's unmatched. And so it's fun to be a part of it. It's fun to be out there, practice every day, and just see how, how focused and, and, and excited these guys, are, these guys are to play in this game. Uh, and the anticipation for having a chance to run out on that field and take on your biggest rival.
back one more time crowd filing out of course heading up to the army navy bonfire one more segment for the season here on this week in army football as we get set for the season finale the biggest week of the year the biggest game of the year coming up on saturday the 123rd army navy game presented by usaa jeff munkin each and every week here with us on the show does a tremendous job make sure you tune in one o'clock across the army sports network kickoff just after three o'clock you can listen on the varsity network app sirius xm tune in all those places make sure you are tuned in for the final broadcast of the season the final game of the season army against navy this broadcast an exclusive presentation of army west point sports properties a property of Learfield, under the broadcasting rights granted by the United States Military Academy at West Point. This broadcast is copyrighted. Any rebroadcast or reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of the Academy at Army West Point Sports Properties. The general manager of Army West Point Sports Properties makes it all happen, Steve Tucker. We thank him very much. Caitlin Morris on the wireless mic tonight. Corey Young hands with us throughout the year getting married this weekend. A very uh, well wishes and good luck to Corey on getting married of course our guests throughout the year who come on each and every week and tell some of the just great stories about army football in west point mike skelly those here at the cadet first class club taking care of us each and every week and those keeping us on the air ryan panny who each and every week gets us on connected to the internet facebook live youtube tv skyler peter jimmy Tony, Randy, do an awesome job at the radio station across the Army Sports Network. Everyone else who helps us out throughout the year. Rich DeMarco saying so long one final time here on This Week in Army Football. It's Army and Navy coming up on Saturday. Thanks for watching and listening all year long. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, everyone.